Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and this video is on the INTJ personality type from my experiences. Now, INTJs, if you didn't know them, are people that tend to be highly critical thinkers. They are looking at how to fine tune and optimize each situation. They are people that can see in the depth in each particular action you take what is working and what's not working. They're usually good at spotting when a tone is off key, they're good at noticing when something is done wrong, when something is not cooked properly, or when something can be improved. They're critical thinkers first and foremost. They are also beyond this philosophers. They are introverted and intuitive types, people that like to reflect on and devise their own theories about the world. They come up often with all kinds of theories and ideas for how the world works and how it should work. They are wanderers, people that walk their own way in life. They tend to be speculative people that are usually able to predict with high accuracy how an event is going to go down, what's going to happen, what, who's going to do what, what's going to occur, and how to plan and how to plan and adjust accordingly to this information. They are systems thinkers. They execute and apply disciplinary thinking. They think based on a discipline or based on a system based on how an academic uh, institute would orient themselves in a situation, based on how a company tends to navigate and understand an issue. They're good at thinking and executing jargon and understanding technical jargon and how a company works. It's different processes, it's different parts, and how to use them all together to their advantage. They're highly resourceful and ambitious architects, good at devising and developing blueprints and uh, frameworks and lists and maps, to organize a situation and to know and to create a kind of strategy for dealing with the world. I met and I have always got along really well with the INTJ personality type. We tend to become co-conspiracists, we tend to become, we tend to borrow upon each other's po uh, powers at all kinds of times and we tend to have kind of a mutual respect and appreciation towards one another. I've not only noticed that they come to me to understand other people, but also to understand how to deal with and how to manage other people. Because if there is anything INTJs struggle with and tend to share difficult experiences with, it is other people. It is people that are being stubborn, obstinate. It's about people that are being irrational, that are being emotional, that are refusing to realize how correct the INTJ is, because the INTJ has generally an impeccable insight into things. They are very accurate in analyzing others and in analyzing situations and in knowing exactly how to solve a problem. They tend to be good at spotting and giving critique when you do something wrong and they tend to be good at noticing and identifying when people are struggling with something. They're good judges of character overall, people that will generally spot who is capable and who is not capable, who can be trusted and relied upon and who cannot. They're quite resourceful, they're really good at putting a project together, they're good at strategizing, and they're good at all kinds of elements, but they do tend to struggle with, in particular, the communicative aspects of getting people aboard a project or a plan, and the introspective, intrapersonal perspective why people do what they do, what makes people take certain decisions and to act in certain ways. And the key conversations that I always end up having with INTJs is uh, about other people, why they don't do things, why they get angry at them, why they don't handle things well. And uh, I am kind of often the, the kind of translator of the INTJ, the person that will take what they are saying and how... Uh, and fully understanding and appreciating their insights and giving it to people, serving it to people in a way that can be understood. I tend to find that a lot of INTJs need interpreters because they hide behind and have these complex schematics for almost every situation. They have all kinds of lines and patterns and data and mathematics and systems for all kinds of things and solutions, but typically no person can understand these solutions but themselves. And so what I find is uh, I am the one that tends to have to understand the INTJ and to uh, get other people behind it. And as a person that loves to go and to back a front figure, I have always been drawn to INTJs for this purpose. I felt that uh, 
they have been, and I have often put them in this role of the front figure of a project or a key strategist, where I have been the person, the communicator, and the person that rallies and gets people together on a project. Now, something that I've always noticed about INTJs and something they've shared with me often is this paranoia or struggle to trust other people. And it's uh, something that I notice comes up in a lot of INTJs, this uh, issue with power structures and with this aggressiveness in this uh, world of power and uh, of people that are more powerful than you are, in a sense. It's, all, it's not just that INTJs notice that other people are more powerful than them. <coughs> It is that they can struggle with feeling inferior to others and feeling like they are undesirable to others or that they are the least wanted people in the group. And this is one of the core fears that I've touched upon in when I've explored INTJs and I got to know them. It's that they have to get over and learn to find an answer to this problem, this sense of inferiority that they feel often early on, especially when young. They don't always feel that confident or that assertive that people tend to think they are. People have this idea of the INTJ as this always confident, always secure, always uh, self-assured person, but uh, then you're probably just looking at their outer layer. If you get to know them, you notice that they actually do struggle with issues of trust and issues of doubt of other people. Struggles to rely on others, struggles to believe in others. and uh, they won't always share this insecurity with you. They don't uh, want to talk about that and they will often hide it in a very uh, hard to spot manner. And uh, what they will do instead, of course, is they will get aggressive or they will um, become and victimize themselves, feeling like they have been wronged or that they have been attacked when they haven't. Uh, they can become aggressive in the sense of uh, suddenly attacking or going at someone uh, and typically this can be sometimes even a positive thing because it tends to bring conflict to the surface if there is a struggle in power dynamics if there is something wrong if there is something that's not good then this attack or this uh, challenge tends to bring to heart of matter uh, issues that need to be resolved and I don't see INTJs as people brushing issues aside I typically send, see INTJs as people bringing issues to the surface. And uh, the INTJs that I admire the most are the ones that are the most able to do this, that are the most able to speak up about things that are wrong and things that they feel bad about. They will never really say that they are feeling bad about it. They won't get to you in that emotional level, and it's easy to miss that level, but that level exists, and it's important to recognize. Now, with INTJs, Something that I always love is their kind of uh, confident energy. And this is something that I see in a lot of thinking and judging types. This can-do attitude. Yes, we can fix it. Yes, we can do it. Yes, it's possible. INTJs are typically inclined to be architects. People that come up with solutions to problems. If there is an idea or a vision or a proposal, no matter how crazy it is. And this is how I benefit from INTJs. They will show me a way to make it possible. They will show me a way to make it happen in reality. They will, if I have this idea in my head, this ideological issue, this sense of uh, political proposal, this uh, goal that is completely unrealistic, they have a way of making it realistic. And I, there's been so many times when I have had these ideas in my head that I wanted to explore and where INTJs have picked it up and said, okay, so this is how we explore it. And the key things that I felt I had to overcome with dealing with INTJs, it was a uh, feeling sometimes that they didn't listen to me, that they uh, kind of heard what they wanted to hear, and that they kind of took my ideas and didn't really understand them. And it's mutual, really, it is mutual. That's, uh, that's the case. Like, INFJs struggle sometimes to understand INTJs, and INTJs struggle sometimes to understand INFJs. But we do have an ability to make ourselves heard if we put the energy into it. And uh, 
typically this is a really enriching collaboration. In some ways, I tend to see INTJs as my successor types. Like, I take an idea or a vision and I execute it and I communicate it, and then an INTJ picks it up and makes uh, <laughs> their version of it with thinking and judging and introversion and thinking. And they take an idea or they come up with a project or they come up with something. And then I take something from that and I communicate it and I turn it into an ideology or a vision or a message or like this uh, speech in a way. And uh, that's typically like how we pull on each other. So we take each other's and we bring out completely different sides to it, different flavors to it. In some ways, I've always felt that I've been inclined to be the caregiver in a sense where they have felt more like the magicians in a sense. They felt much more expectful and they felt a lot more rigorous and they felt much more thorough with things. Like they take things one step at a time, step by step by step by step by step, where I tend to kind of uh, take things more like qualitatively, like I tend to be much more about nuance. And this is a, an important distinction that I felt with INTJs that they tend to think in very operable terms. Everything they say is, can be phrased kind of as a logical argument. Um, and the, everything that I say can't be taken as a logical argument. And nothing I say can be taken as a logical argument. That's one of my core flaws. Uh, it's very hard to take what I say and to see it as a measurable thing. I deal much more with vague questions such as human experience and qualia and how we're feeling and what we want and what our ideals are and what my ideals are. And uh, that's always why I've enjoyed working together with INTJs so much, I think. Now, I think INTJs are quite common, in particular in Sweden. And that's probably also why I've had many experiences with them. But also, I've felt drawn to them. I've always felt very drawn to them. And it's perhaps been because they tend to struggle with this sense of mis feeling misunderstood to some extent. And um, because I think I've always been able to help explain to them why. And I've always felt the need to do that. I've always felt the need to help them. And I always felt like they are the kind of people I want to root for, the people that I believe can do anything they set their minds to. Now, INTJs are very, very stubborn people. They <laughs> won't hear you if they see something to be true, if they believe something to be true, if they have thought about it and know what they want. They have no ability to listen to your arguments and your thoughts because they are very, very sure of themselves, where I am really not. And I think that's also an, a building of an interesting collaboration because um, I am open to compromise. And I think that uh, they are not. And I kind of find it refreshing. And I, can find, I find it refreshing because some things like truth cannot be compromised. Truth is just truth, no matter what we say and what public opinion dictates and what everyone else see, sees as real. I think INTJs taught me that everything wasn't about what everyone else thought. I didn't have to confirm all my ideas with other people for them to be right. I didn't have to compromise with other people. I didn't have to uh, share my ideas and get them accepted by others for ideas to be real. The ideas were real if they were real. The ideas were true if they were true. And um, I do really feel like... INTJs helped me give legs to stand on, a confidence that I don't think I would have had if I hadn't been able to work together with them and to uh, rely on them and to see them and to learn from them. Now, if there is one thing I would like to kill in the INTJ stereotype, it is this bad guy, tough guy image. INTJs are total sweethearts. Most INTJs I've met are... Total sweethearts, sensitive, sensitive to emotional signals and to your intentions, worrying about why you do things, why you say the things you do, what you mean, what's behind it. They're prone to reading in things, they're prone to being sensitive to appearances and to how things look and uh, to how they look. And they worry about other people gossiping behind their backs and they worry about what other people think. And it matters to them. So 
don't uh, trick yourself that 90J doesn't care. Be careful and be gentle with them just as you would with any other person. Now this also goes the other way. Realize that when a 90J is giving you suggestions and advice and uh, feedback for how things could improve in the future, they're really not trying to hurt you in any way. They're trying to help you. This is their love language. Their love language is to give advice and corrections and suggestions for how you can improve. They see that as... <laughs> and they do that because they like you and because they believe in you. 